Well, how are you doing? <coughs> Time for a video. Uh, you might hear a song background sound. Um, <clears throat> sounds, I have a cat who is very bold and she's doing her best to get into the room where I'm making the video. And if I leave her in, she's going to walk all over the computer and make a lot of noise. So you may hear, hear her outside the door. Um, and if you do, she probably won't stop uh, meowing through the whole video. So uh, let's hope it doesn't come through too much <clears throat> if she starts. Uh, okay, this is going to be called the history of mass. How is it defined? I've touched on this on other videos and even though it's not really the hot topic at the moment, I think it, it, this is a good time to bring it out. <clears throat> okay, the, I have a, this is just all, uh, all written words, so I'm just going to get stuck into it and not waste any more of your time. <clears throat> okay. Because that's one thing I hate is on videos on YouTube when they take forever asking you to do everything and giving you different things that you can sign up to and all. nobody cares. Just get down to the video. That's what matters. Okay. <clears throat> the first mention of mass within the realm of science came in the form of its original Latin meaning, which is an accumulation of stuff. The Latin word is missa, and it was first used within science when it was referred to by Isaac, by Isaac Newton in his book Principia Mathematica. So the original meaning of the word mass is just an accumulation of stuff. It was after Newton's publication that the English bastardization word mass was born out of its Latin word of origin missa. Mass became described as being physical matter that was weightless when not under the influence of a force of gravity. And this description held place up until 1915, when Albert Einstein redescribed gravity as not being a force giving weight to mass, but rather being an apparent effect caused by the curvature of spacetime by mass. So, <clears throat> after 1915, mass was not given weight. Uh, sorry, after 1915, mass was not given weight anymore uh, by a description of gravity as a force, but rather mass was now the baseline cause of the effect described as gravity. Which, mean, which meant that now mass needed a new description as the old description was out of date and that new description was that anything that could be described as having inertia could be described as having mass. But this is a bit messy. <clears throat> the reason that this description is a bit messy is because something needs to have weight to have inertia. As weightless objects can't offer any resistance to acceleration, and inertia is defined as having uh, as anything. Sorry, and inertia is defined as anything that can offer a resistance to acceleration. So, what defines weight? Weight is defined as being a singular downward force vector on a scale. So, anything that falls through the air to the ground can be described as having weight. Taking this into account, we can extrapolate that a piece of wood. A rock or a water droplet, droplet has inertia, as they all display weight, as they all as they all display themselves as ha as having a singular downward vector force. So they all can be quantified on a scales. So let's recap: inertia requires weight, and weight requires a downward vector on a scales. And it's claimed that anything that has inertia has mass. This means then that anything that has a singular downward vector has mass making mass and weight indistinguishable. So mass in that context is weight that is just purely undefined. So an object has mass until it's weight, and then it has weight, or is, it, or is mass purely just describing the overall effect of inertia? Question mark. If I say that a car has mass, then, and I am, and I, sorry, if I say that a car has mass, um, am I then describing it as having inertia? It would seem so as a car obviously has weight, a requirement of inertia. If I want to weigh a large collection of water droplets, then I need to contain them at the bottom and sides. But if I choose to, I can weigh each droplet, droplet individually, as each droplet displays a singular downward vector force in the presence of air. And the convention we know as weight uses the gas molecule known as air as its baseline. Now, you can obviously weigh objects in different mediums, but the downward vector is always required. In chemistry, a mole of something can be described as having or being a mass, but this only confuses the situation further, as in chemistry, a mole of helium gas could be described 
as having or being a mass, but helium gas and all gases in their gaseous state, even more dense gases like CO2, will display vectors in every direction. So no gas will ever have a singular downward vector, and that is why they must be contained on all sides. Or oh, sorry, and that's why they must be contained on all sides, top and bottom, to be weighed. This means that <clears throat> gases have no weight, as once in their gaseous state they cannot be weighed while unconfined. You must contain a gas to weigh it, as gas is described as always accelerating in every direction. Each, each gas particle is a singular independent entity that moves about at high velocities, with, it, with its rate of movement being dependent on and controlled purely by temperature alone. And this means that gas does not display inertia. Gas does not resist acceleration, as it is always accelerating, that is its natural state of being, which means that gas will never display inertia as it can't because it has no weight. So gas inherently cannot be described as mass, only an accumulation of matter that is adhering to the natural gaseous to that is adhering to natural gaseous behavior. So I'll read that again. Cannot I'm sorry. So gas inherently cannot be described as mass, only an accumulation of matter that is adhering to natural gaseous behavior. And if anyone disagrees with this premise, then remember that objects weigh more in a vacuum. So if people want to use the term mass post-1915, then they cannot describe mass as being weightless, as that belief is, uh, is, is pre-1915. But they can also not describe gas in its gaseous state as having or being mass, as gases have no weight without containment which means that they have no weight in their natural state of being. They can only assert pressure within a container and not a singular downward force vector on the scales. Only objects that can be weighed can be described as having or being a mass, as post-1915 mass has been described as a quantitative measure of inertia, and inertia is a resistance to acceleration. So something needs to have weight to display inertia, and if mass is a quantitative measure of inertia, then mass requires weight, something gas does not and can not have. So describing something as having mass means that you're describing something as having weight. So you're, dis so you're definitely not describing gas and gas behaviour when you are referring to the word mass. You are only describing an object or substance that can be weighed in its natural state, so not gas. Which brings us to the conclusion of this topic for now. And that is that if you are describing something as having mass, then you are definitely not describing gas behaviour. But in my personal opinion, mass is a bad description for anything. To finish, I will try, to try a final attempt at a recap. <clears throat> 1. The word mass is derived from the Latin word missa, which means an accumulation of stuff. 2. Mass pre-1915 was described as being weightless, when not under the influence of a force of gravity. 3. Mass post-1915 is described as being a quantitative measure of inertia. 4. Inertia requires weight to actualize. 5. Weight requires a singular downward vector. 6. Everything that has a singular downward vector within the medium of air is capable of being weighed. 7. Gas does not have a singular downward vector, so it cannot be weighed without solid containment. 8. Gas, due to not having a singular downward vector, does not have weight, so by proxy, gas cannot be described as having or being mass. 9. Mass requires inertia. Inertia requires weight. Gas has no weight. 10. Gas constantly accelerates. Thanks for watching.